When we look for dinosaurs in the Arctic, we're looking for gigantic bones sticking out of the ground, but we're also looking for little micro materials, uh, shed teeth and bones and things like that. In a typical field season, which is about three weeks uh, up there, we'll bring back five uh, five gallon buckets of this. And this is, uh, this is paleo gold to us. This is uh, river sediment and stream sediment. And in there we find little treasures. In the 1950s, it was discovered that dinosaurs somehow lived at the poles, the Antarctic and the Arctic. And of course, this opened up all kinds of questions, like how could these animals that we normally associate with being in uh, uh, tropical environments or warm desert environments, how could they possibly have survived under polar conditions? You know, my research team has been working up there since uh, 2007, uh, digging up dinosaurs on the Colville River, and this is about oh, 20 miles from uh, the Arctic Ocean, so we're way up there exciting news that we're reporting in this paper is that we now understand that dinosaurs were reproducing in the high Arctic. Apparently the Arctic was a really great place to have babies and the Prince Creek Formation is now one of the best places in the world to study baby dinosaurs. So we were not only surprised to find some baby dinosaurs, but actually several species of dinosaurs that we now realize were nesting in the Arctic. We've found hatchlings of just about every dinosaur we know that's up there. That includes the hatchlings of giant tyrannosaurs and horned dinosaurs and little raptors, you name it. Uh, the most common dinosaur up there is this one, and this is uh, the skull of one. This is a, a Grunelic cookbagensis, of course, and uh, it was a uh, herbivorous dinosaur uh, with grinding teeth, up to a thousand teeth, believe it or not. Uh, we call them cows of the Cretaceous. These dinosaurs had to endure conditions that no other dinosaurs that we've ever found have had to endure. What our study now shows is that by nesting up there, we have really strong evidence that they had to have been year-round residents of the Arctic. And if they were year-round residents, somehow, in various ways, they managed to survive up there for some pretty, pretty harsh conditions. If they were up there year round, it really helps uh, bolster this argument that uh, I and others support that dinosaurs were actually warm-blooded animals or endotherms, more like birds or mammals. Uh, in this case, we had a major question we were trying to answer, and that one of those was whether or not they were nesting up there, and lo and behold, we were able to uh, you know, crack the code on that one and solve it. But you know, there's more and more questions to be answered uh, down the road, and uh, you know, that's good for us. We're, we're not done going back up there, so as long as I have a reason to trek back up into the Arctic, I'm, I'm going to do it.